and all the suffering indigenous populations and the damnable zoological republic are set free. Chine ke nan ke prumi jani ne chuko kika pembo yende fi wena jan hanso yam mambu ni ne. Onyo ponani ya na achi. Eli gwano wana wa kebe hona nyagi ne pere gam ragi no miko ke bende ke neze pede nkosi. Ani we ne to yi. Agwa ne gato mato o joni ne nke ndiro. Iwe nyanyen do la kedi nubo dono bochin keta. And you were not saying he jammed money in the Tony Nedra hand, sorry. Oh, no, Bonan Yaki Kirin and Opadrakaya. And you were not Okuri, Nassigan and Kamamani get Kelly and Kojo Mani Kelegi. And you were not Jagemma. We're not to you, we're not so proge. Nisu Mugini, the Bundi could never wear Zokum Rapper or Han. Can have a checkwa, a lansog of the Afronium, Machina, and a Unicuranian qua. No make a tag a candy no way where I lance up your phone. I'm not in a can and can't be. I want a gato matto Johnny and candy room. Mandan I want a baby in the ditch. I'm not in a can. You never can get one of what you get. And you went to you. When I see only one in a china can and kept rooming in him. Oh no, Bonaniana Zopota. Oh no, Bonania Bopuyan in the Buyana. Amen. And you went out, says the Pupet and Cosi. Now not to turn a jam and I'm so poor. Sit in a big marone big. He said. He said, he said. That is how clueless the politicians are. Very deceitful and wicked. Very, very deceitful and wicked. They can never say the truth in their life. Every single thing you hear from their mouth is evil. That is why no sane person will continue to believe in the contraption called Nigeria. There's no single sane person. Because when you look at, when you look at things that are happening, when you open your, go to the media, go to their conventional media, go to social media and see videos, see information, hear from them what they are saying. There is no point to show us that Nigeria is going to be better in the next 100 years. There is no point to show that Nigeria will be better in any time in our lifetime. It can never happen. It can never happen. There is no point in any plan to make Nigeria a better place. What you see is a bunch of clueless and evil men coming out from all tribes, from all religion, they are everywhere. No single one of them have a single truth in their mouth. From all tribe, from all religion, as long as they are politicians, these are a bunch of evil men. Evil men and women, clueless people, selfish and self-centered people who care about themselves and themselves alone. That is why they can sell their own bed rights for porridge. They can sell their own bed rights for a plate of rice. You see why the masses are not with them. The masses in Biafra land want self-determination. They should hear it and hear it clear. Not only Biafra, even the rural land, the masses want self-determination. The whole of the southern part of Nigeria, we are not campaigning for southern president. What they are asking for is self-determination through referendum. Grant the southern part of Nigeria a referendum. Let them decide their fate. Even the middle birds, they are crying for referendum. Including the northern part of Nigeria, the houses are crying for referendum today. They want to be on their own. This is the cry of the masses. None of them is ready for your presidency. But what do you see? What you see is people pushing evil agenda, telling all manner of lies, pushing lies, lies. You see a bunch of liars. Go and check the clique of people who are coming up for their, for their presidency. Every single one of their politicians, they are all liars. They don't have any single truth in them. Look at the one that called himself Tulubu. Tulubu, whose source of money nobody knows. He is still coming out shamelessly to talk about a certificate. A certificate that he doesn't have. And I'm going to play a video for you to prove to you. One of the men they are presenting, one of the flag, one of the person that they are going to put in that 2023, after 23 election, if at all it will hold. Because I still believe by the special glory of God, Chukwokabiyama will take away Biafra from them before 2023. I still believe strongly that Chukwokabiyama, in a twinkle of an eye, can change things and make us not to be part of them. Because we don't want to be part of them. I'm going to play for you a video of that same man. The man you're going to watch his video. Everything he's saying there is lying. Lies. And I'm going to prove it to you. Every single information you hear from him are lies. Watch what Tunubo had to say. In his recent... His recent... Uh, 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 is it the, is it the in-house discussion or whatever? Listen to it and hear what he had to say. Lies. Nigeria will remain united in my period. And we will use that unity, the symbol of our party, stay as one, 
to cleanse of Nigeria of unrealizable potential. And I graduated with honors. Honors. I was recruited by five of the biggest accounting firms, Deloitte, Atto Anderson, and others. They offered me a job. But I chose the one that promised to give me audit, exposure, and assignment to organization having roots in Nigeria. I'm a very contented person. I called for this audience, and I'm grateful to you. My background is in accountants and finance. That's what I went to university for, Chicago State University. I was a distinguished scholar. I won many awards. You have heard him. This is a great liar. Everything he has told you there is a lie. The course he told you that he read is a lie. The university he told that he attended is a lie. He cannot prove it. A man who cannot even prove his own source of wealth. And I'm going to show you a video of somebody who have challenged him in the law court, even bet money, that if he can be able to come out and prove where he got the so-called certificate that is parading, that he is willing to face him in any law court. Somebody came out to speak about this nonsense that this man is still parading around. But the media, media, Nigerian media that are interested in money alone, they don't care about the masses. They don't care about the loss of life. They don't care about good governance. What they care about is how much comes into their own cover. That is what the media is always promoting and following. And that is why you can never see the truth. You can never, ever get the truth. You can never get the truth. No matter how you try, you can't get the truth. It is only lie and lie and lie. That is what they continue to promote at any point in time in their media. Every single thing that man have said there are all lies. Are all lies. And somebody, somebody have come to challenge him to his face. Let me see. I find the video. Oh, God. What? I, 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 that, look, I can bet you any amount of money. Let Bola bring out the certificate of his primary school, his secondary school, and the university he attended. We want to see them. Because I remember in 1998, or 1999, when we had the elections. You know, Afiku Yomi was the one. When they raised them, pulled his papers that he filled to INEC, they now asked him to produce all those papers. He said he went to government college Ibadan and the children home school in Ibadan. We went there, we checked. What year? Where's your certificate? Nothing. When they were going to hoist him, he quickly said that it wasn't him that signed it. It was Afiku Yomi that filled it. You look at you, you, your certificate. If you have genuine certificate, you went to a particular school, you must have friends. Who? <laughs> because you won't be the only one in that college. Let's see them. I am shocked that Ogunlewe will be saying this in public. He knows for real that this fellow doesn't have all these certificates, and I'm not hiding it. Let him bring them out. Look, the, de the days of lying and, 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 and telling a load of bull is over, completely over. Whatever you have, tell us. If you are from whatever, tell us. Why, why are you afraid? You must be afraid because you know that people will find out a lot of things that are illegal. That's why. Look, 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 the educated is the best educated. Is the, the, the is the is the one who 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 how? Money shows the day. What was his achievement in Lagos? You have heard. 
This is somebody who knows Bola Tunubu very well, but the judge. He has challenged Bola Tunubu so many times to provide his certificate, a verified one. He has challenged him to all his evil. You see him speaking in a rice television, a conventional media speaking and challenging him. And up to today, Bola Tunubu is still parading those lies. He's still telling those lies. He's still telling those lies because Nigeria is a corrupt nation, a nation where corruption strives. A nation where only corrupt people progress. As long as you have the money in your pocket, only corrupt people progress in Nigeria. A country that supports everything that is wrong, everything that's evil. And that is why we are trying to pull out of it. That is why Biafrans must try by all means possible. Ududuans must try anything possible. The Middle Betans must do everything possible to break this contraption. Let us get out of it. Because as long as we continue to parade this evil contraption called Nigeria, this British company, nothing is going to change. It's going to get worse. Look at somebody who is preparing to come on. A liar, a born liar. Even his source of wealth cannot be verified. His source of wealth cannot be verified. And he's still parading himself proudly as somebody who wants to contest. Shouting, today he has bought all the media in Nigeria. All the media. They are still promoting him. I'm going to show you another one. We are somebody who came to defend him was asked, what is the source of his money? He couldn't explain. Somebody who claimed to be defending that very monster was asked, what is the source of money of the, the source of his wealth? What is his business? What, of, what is his business that he can be able to bring a bullion van to his home? The person could not be able to explain. That is the kind of, that is why you see money ritual in Nigeria today. You see children today in Nigeria no longer believe. Children no longer believe that they can make a genuine money. They don't believe in education anymore. Because you see people who are the leaders in that country, Nigeria, they are a bunch of illiterates. People who never saw the world of the school. Illiterates. They are so-called professors and doctors and whatever. They are on the background. They have no voice. They have no voice. All the professors and doctors, engineers, they have no voice. But the, those who are not educated, who went and bought certificates for themselves with their money, they use their money to buy the certificate. They have nothing in their brain. They have nothing to offer. Ritualists, they are the people in charge. That is why you see youths today following the same step. And that is why you see the way they have destroyed the brain of the youths, mainly in Biafra land. They destroyed the brain of the youths in Biafra land. Now they focus on pursuing things that are irrelevant. That is why you see the government that allow people to be promoting evil on social media. That is why you see the native doctors become boldly in social media to begin to make charm, enhancement charm for people. They will make charm for people to enhance their business. They will make people charm for people to deceive people in their churches. They will make charm for people to, to progress in their evil deeds. They will make all manner of charm and they will promote it on the social media and nobody is talking. Nobody is speaking about it because the contraption itself is evil. Go and do something genuine. If you are doing something genuine, you will never ever see the light of the day. The video I played now is just somebody who is standing, standing, beating, even putting money down that if Bola Pundu can be able to prove his certificate. But nobody is listening to him. That same Tunubu is still parading that same university, parading that same university he never attended. Fake result and fake bought, in, bought certificate that he bought. That is what they are still parading. When he comes to his source of wealth, a person was asked, somebody who is defending him was asked on the national media about the source of his wealth. He couldn't be able to defend it. Watch that. Watch it again. Because we will continue to bring these videos to refresh your memory. Those of you who still believe in one Nigeria, those of you who still think that Nigeria can be better anyway, still watch. I'm still telling you, even the so-called person you are having in Anambra today today, don't believe anybody as a politician. Do not trust them and believe them. Watch. All right. Let, let's go back to the issue of corruption. You said... Those were just allegations. Yes. But I'd like to know, how did he make his wealth? How did he make this so much very big wealth that he can afford a bullion van prior to an election in his home? That's a staggering, colossal yeah. amount of wealth. How did that wealth come about? Because I think if I check his resume, the last thing I saw was a counter with mobile you know, what, what business does, does he do? He's been in government for a while. How did he make that wealth? That's one. Two, there's been discrepancies about his age. I ask you, how old is he? 
uh, well, let me tell you, you see, uh, this, this, these two questions you've just uh, posed, uh, it's part of what I have answered earlier. I think at this point that we've got into, our emphasis should be on the pedigree of this candidate, what he has demonstrated that he has done, what he has achieved, how he has changed the revenue of Lagos State, how he has put a long-term plan to implement infrastructure. How infrastructure. How he has ensured that he instilled discipline. Honorable Jibril. How much people that he has built. Honorable Jibril. These are the focus that we should concentrate on. Honorable Jibril. Because most of these political issues that we keep raising front and back will not solve the problem. So the emphasis now, the focus now, should be on the capacity and the competence okay. of this candidate. Honorable Jibril. How did Bola Metinubu yes. make his money? That's all I want to know. You can tell me and what we can focus on. And, and we'll talk about it in the manifesto. How and, did Bola Tinubu make so much money that he had a bullion van in his home on election day? And how old well, is he? Those are the questions that well, people are uh, asking out there. How old is he? Well, how did he I'm make also, the I'm also putting it... I'm also now, you've asked your question clearly, and I will give you a simple and clear answer. And, now, and, as, and when you continue to repeat the question, you will get the same answer. These are all trash from the internet that people keep putting it together, and we will not elevate such conversations. But when the campaign commences, we will bring out facts and figures and put before Nigerians. But we will not create a narrative for them. So for now, the emphasis is on the competence of the candidate, what he has achieved, the network he has built, the people he has invested in, and his plan for a better Nigeria. All right. Uh, can, can I ask you this? How was this trash? Bullion Van was found in his home. The pictures were viral, and there's been no denial. So how are you saying that is trash? And how is it trash that we want to know how the person that will lead Nigeria made so much wealth? You know, and also the declaration of being richer than also is... state. So how, is, that's not trash. What, how did he make his money? That's all I want to know. And tell me how old he is. So I can take you by something, because there's been discrepancies, too, by the people of his age and his wealth. It's just a question I'm asking. Please. And, and, and Rufai is just an answer that I'm giving you as well. You see, un unfortunately, you are posing the question as a journalist, what will satisfy you is when I say things the way you want me to say it. So you don't want to respect my own response. And I think okay. it is unfair okay. and probably very unprofessional. Okay, because Honorable the response is simple. We've raised, we've, raised, we've raised issues here about corruption. I gave instance with even Ruben Abati himself. And I gave several instances of a lot of politicians in Nigeria where you will see stuff like this on the internet. Well, and we said we are not going to elevate such conversation, and we will not. Okay, Honorable So Jibrin. if you put the question before me 100 times, I will not. You've seen it. You have seen it. These are the people who are coming out to contest for presidency in the contraption called Nigeria. You see why no well-meaning person will be talking about Nigeria. You should be talking about your region. If you're Odudua, go back to Odudua land. If you're Biafran, go to Biafran land. If you are from Middleburg, strive to have your own nation in the Middleburg. Even the houses have their own nation. The people who continue to pop up to be the leaders in that country called Nigeria are evil men who are bent to destroy every other person. You have seen it by yourself. Simple question. How did the Bola Tinubu make his money? How old is he? The easiest and simplest question anybody can ask. The simplest and easiest question to ask for somebody who is aspiring to be a president. How did he make his money? How old is he? He couldn't be able to tell us how old the person he's standing for is. His age. Nobody knows his age. How he's made his money. Nobody knows how he made his money. 
And this is somebody they are paraded to be the president in the contraption called Nigeria. That idiot that was that they were asking that question is also a lawmaker. He's also one of the deciding factors in the country of Nigeria. Those politicians, these are the evil politicians who cannot answer a simple question that people have to know. They continue to lie and lie and lie at every given instances. They will always lie to you. How can these people give you a better nation? How can a criminal, a froster, an evil person give you a, a, a better nation? Look at Imo State. Look at Imo State as an example. Imo State today is being run by a froster. A froster, a criminal who's supposed to be in jail. Somebody who escaped death penalty. Escaped death penalty all of a sudden they wiped out his record and today he's the governor of Imo State. Being used by the caliphate against his own people. That is why he's bold to bring jet to bomb his own people. Only a criminal can do that. Only a criminal can bring a jet to bomb his own people. No sane person, no normal person can do that except a criminal. You have seen it. You have seen it. You have seen it happen openly. See what is happening. And you think it's a joke. Some people think it's business as usual. It can never be business as usual. It can never be. It can never be. Things can never be the same. Nigeria will never ever survive. It will never survive. The same thing, the same thing goes to the one that you see the person they are parading in a, in a, in a, in, a, in Anambra State today. Today, Saludo have taken over in Anambra State. It doesn't matter how good Saludo is as a person. It doesn't matter how good he is. I have seen so many places where he was speaking up for Biafra. But today that he has been sworn in based on the constitution of Nigeria that is evil, based on the constitution of Nigeria that has injustice. Today, that Senudo have been sworn in, he will never offer anything different from what other politicians are offering. If you're one of those who is raising your hope high because of Senudo, do not raise your hope high. You can never get anything different from what other politicians are doing. No matter who you make the governor, no matter who you make the president, go to heaven and bring an angel and make him the president of Nigeria. Nigeria will be worse than it is today. It will be worse than it because. Britain has mouthed out the way it should be. The caliphate have already drawn their agenda how it will be. As long as you are serving, the injustice in the country will remain. The people will continue to remain slaves. They will continue to make sure that the, the Western world continues to get the benefit from, from Nigeria. The caliphate are standing for it. They are the willing tool, the willing tool who don't want to be free. Even when we were when the southern part of Nigeria we are going for independence, they said they were not ready. Some of you forgot it. When Awolowo, when Awolowo, the Dr. Nanazi was going for independent, they said they were not ready. Tafoya Bela wasn't ready. They were not ready for independence. They did not. We are not ready. But we decided to wait for them. What does that tell you? These people are born slaves. They have already accepted slavery as their own. But we are kings, queens, and princes in the south. In the southern part of Nigeria, you have kings, princes, and queens. We know ourselves. And we recognize who we are. That is why we cannot stay down. And that is why we cannot continue to be slaves in a contraption called Nigeria. We cannot be, continue to be British slave or caliphate slave. That slavery will stop. And the only way we stop that we stop it is self-determination. Referendum and let us go our separate ways. Mazen Nandekano is different because he is speaking the language that the masses want. He's different. He's not pretending about it. You see why Solinka. Wallace Inga, Professor Wallace Inga came out and said that it doesn't matter who you make the president of Nigeria, the caliphate will continue to run the affairs. The illiterate caliphate will continue to run the affairs of the country. That is what Professor Wallace Inga said. But after saying it, he go back to his palace and relax. Mazin Nandekano is a different person. Mazin Nandekano saw the problem. He did the problem and he didn't relax. He is working day and night to make sure that that very caliphate agenda is crumpled. To make sure that that very caliphate plan is destroyed, to make sure that that plan doesn't fly, that is why he's different, and that is why they want to take him out by all means possible. But Chukwuoke Kabiama have brought it. Chukwuoke Kabiama have aborted all their plan, kept Mazin Nandekano for us to restore Biafra, to make sure that every indigenous tribe in the continent of Congo Nigeria get their freedom and be speaking confidently on their own. That is the mission that Mazin Nandekano is pursuing, and he's going to accomplish it.
It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter the attack you bring. It doesn't matter the angle they're coming from. Mazen Nande Kano must definitely succeed in the assignment that Shuko Kerman have given him. He's not standing by his own. If you're one of those who is still hoping on the caliphate, if you're one of those who is still hoping on Nigeria, you better go and prepare for your own burial. You already signed your burial because it is going to get worse. No matter who becomes your governor, no matter who becomes your president, it is going to get worse. The only solution that is going to free the people and give them their freedom is when we all get out of this contraption called Nigeria. Self-determination. Grant a referendum. Let the people decide where they want to be. Let the people choose where they want to be. If at the end of the day, they choose to be in, in, in Nigeria, even with your ringe, you go and rig it, rig the, the referendum. If you succeed in rigging your referendum, and people choose to be in Nigeria, we will remain there. We die there. But as long as people have not decided to be and you're forcing us, you are wasting your time. The insecurity will increase. The poverty will increase. The destruction will increase. The failure will increase. Nothing can work. Nothing whatsoever. Because the people who will keep off coming up are criminals. Criminals will keep up coming up. Coming up. I will go to play for you again another politician. A politician who was being interviewed, a simple question was asked to him. Where did you come from? Where did you come from? He is even ashamed to tell us if, if he's a Northern or he's a West, Southwesterner. He is ashamed to name himself as either as a Yoruba, as a Rausa. He's ashamed to call himself from the North, or he doesn't know where he comes from. A politician who tomorrow will come out and begin to tell you that he's fighting for president, he wants to be your president. He is very ashamed to associate himself with his own people. You will ask an Igbo politician, where are you from? He will not go to tell you that he's Igbo. He says he's a Nigerian. Nobody is a Nigerian. Nobody is a nigger area. Nobody is from that nigger area. Nobody is a Nigerian. You have Biafrans, you have the Duduans, you have the Middle Betans, you have the Hausas and other tribes. Nobody is a Nigerian, nobody. And there is nobody that is loyal to that Nigerian. That is why it will never survive. No single person is patriotic to that very country. Not, not even one. Not even the late Muhammad Buhari. Not even Obasanjo. Nobody is patriotic to Nigeria because they know that they are not Nigerians. They know that that's not where they are. British forced that very thing on them. And they have been managing it because it is serving their purpose, because it makes them relevant. That is why they are promoting it. It is not because that they know it, they love it. They are promoting it because it makes them relevant. You only have people who are Biafrans, Ududuans, Middle Betans, and the Hausas with the other people. You don't have, there is no Nigerian anywhere. There's no Nigerian. Mazen Nanikan have explained this several times. They explained this several times that if you want to tell us that there's something in Nigeria, what is the Nigerian national food? Do you have any food that's called that Nigerian national food? Every other country have their national food. The national food that everybody adores and eats. You have it in the US, you have it in the UK, you have it in Germany. But in Nigeria, what is your national dish? There is no national dish. No national dish. You only have the Biafran dish, you have the Dudua dish, and you have the Hausa dish. The contraption is not one. These are different people who are forced together by force. And the Britain and the Caliphate have made the people so scared to be able to identify themselves with whom they are. People are now ashamed to identify themselves with whom they are. You see an Igbo man will be ashamed to call himself Igbo. An Hausa man will be ashamed to address himself as a Hausa. A Middle Better will be ashamed to address himself as a Middle Better. That is how damaged their brain are. But all the good other nations, people are proud of whom they are. A Chinese will be proud to be Chinese. Any place you call him, ask him, where are you from? He says he's Chinese. Person from the States will ask you that I'm from the United States. A British will ask you I'm British. A German will tell you I'm German. They are proud of it. But can a Nigerian identify him or herself as a Nigerian? Nobody is a nigger from a nigger area. Go and check all the people who are using that their traveling certificate, that their traveling paper. That is their passport they, for traveling. They use it for travel. But when they go to their destination, they never answer Nigerian. Thousands of Nigerians abroad don't identify themselves as Nigerians. We don't identify themselves as Nigerians. Today, we identify ourselves as Biafran. I identify myself as Biafran where I am. You ask me where are you from? I say I'm from Biafra. 
if you don't know Biafra, I describe you a country that is on the occupation by the Nigeria. This is my country. I want you to watch this video where a, a politician could not be able to tell us where he or she comes from. Watch. I've been asked this intention. question severally. Yeah. Uh, you are Senator Abubakar Bukala Saraki. Yeah. Is uh, Bukala Saraki a Yoruba man or a northerner? or southwesterner uh, a lot of people uh, seems to be very confused and i understand their confusion quaras not central you know the reason why i'm asking because in nigeria's politics people will ask the question who are you where which tribe do you belong is a wrong narrative to have in our politics ethnicity and tribalism and all of that but it's something that has shaped our politics and we cannot run away from it for tonight are you Bukala Saraki or Abu Bakar Saraki? Sula, I mean, when I say Abu Bakar Saraki, you know what I mean. I'm a Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian for, for today's, for all Nigerians. I believe I, I, a lot of us in politics, we spend our time on these kind of conversations. But you know the real conversation today? is the insecurity. The unemployment a lot of our youth, 50-50%. Cost of living. Those are the conversations. And and when I've 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 been to a lot of polling, talking to young people, you have said it. A simple question: Where are you from? Are you from the north or from the southwest? A simple question. He couldn't answer. That is the confusion, the contraption corner have placed in all of their head. When you ask them simple question, they begin to dance around and begin to tell you all manner of stories. This is why Biafran people have to wake up. We have to stand our ground. Massive civil disobedience have to continue. It doesn't matter who they make as governor. Do not lose your... Don't put help on Saludo. Saludo is not going to be different from what you have seen before because he has been sworn in today based on the constitution of the contraption called Nigeria. He has been sworn in based on that constitution that is injustice, that is, that is supporting injustice. That same constitution that supports everything that's evil. That same constitution that supports the killing of the Biafrans. Suludo has been sworn in based on that very constitution. Don't hope on him. Nothing is going to be better. The only hope you have as a Biafran person is what? Biafra. Biafra is our hope. Biafra remains our hope. Continue to sit at to home. Continue to embark on massive civil disobedience to release Mazen Nandikan. The freedom of Mazen Nandikan matters a lot for us. If Soludo wants to prove to us that he has something different on his table, let him go and demand for the unconditional release of Mazen Nanikam. If he wants us to believe that he knows what he's doing, let him open up his mouth and demand for the unconditional release of Mazen Nanikam. Without that, he is just like every other person. Because we have seen him, he has been sworn in based on the constitution of the caliphate. Sworn in based on the evil constitution of the caliphate. Of course, we have always known that they will not do anything different from what you are seeing. They can't do anything different. It is just the same people, the same people with the same evil agenda. And we cannot allow that. Don't lose your focus. Any Biafran you are, wherever you are watching this video, do not lose your focus. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. Don't allow anybody to push you around. We must have to continue to do what we are doing to demand for the freedom of our Sunnah Mazen and Nikan. Don't help on politician. Anything you are hearing about political solution is a scam. They have spoken in several ways. It is more clearer than before. You saw when they were shouting on top of their voices, telling you that without, uh, without uh, restructuring, there will be no 2023. In their conventional media, every one of them that was shouting on the conventional media saying that without restructuring, there will be no 2023. Today, all of them have a presidential candidate. Today, every one of them have a presidential candidate they are supporting. They are even supporting evil one, those evil presidential candidates. They are the people they are supporting. Supporting evil. They are supporting evil when they know that this thing they are supporting evil, and yet they cannot retrieve their step. We cannot stop. They cannot stop us. No matter how they try to deceive us and stop us, we will not be deceived and we cannot be stopped. We will continue to fight for our freedom, continue to speak up. And we continue to demand for the unconditional days of Mazen and Nandekano and continue to embark on a massive civil disobedience for us to achieve our Biafra, to get our freedom, and to free Mazen and Nandekano. Don't be deceived.
don't be distracted. If anybody is giving you, telling you any other message, apart from the message you have already had, you will not believe them. They are deceivers. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. They are going to come in different angles from different areas to deceive you. Don't allow yourself to be deceived. We must have to continue to focus on that which is genuine. We must have to continue to focus on our freedom because that is what we have to do. Nobody is going to give us our freedom. Stop hoping on somebody to give you. Nobody will give you your freedom. You will take it by force. And that time is now. That time is now. We have said it that we don't want to see any military in Biafra land. We have said it. The killing that is happening in Biafra land, enough is enough. They have killed enough people. They have destroyed enough life. They have taken enough life in Biafra land and we cannot take it anymore. We can no longer accept it. It's unacceptable. No longer acceptable. So you have to wake up. Before I end this very broadcast, I have to play the voice of Mazin Nandikano to remind you and I what we have to do. To remind you and I, we all have to focus. To remind you and I, the challenges that are before us. Watch this video. Watch it carefully and listen carefully to every word he has to say. Fulani Janjaweed can overwhelm us is by dividing us. If you are an agent of Fulani Caliphate, if you have come to do the bidding of Fulani Janjaweed in our land, I am asking you this very evening to retrace your steps. Because again, starting from this very day, anywhere their friends are killed, any governor, any police commissioner who tolerates the massacre of innocent people will pay very dearly for it. Will pay very, very dearly for it. Do not underestimate our resolve. Because this evening, first of all, I speak as a human being who is possessed of a compatriot spirit and empathy with the suffering of human beings everywhere, especially in the zoo that Britain created called Nigeria. Second, I speak as a witness to the suffering of Biafrans at the hands of their so-called fellow citizens in the zoo called Nigeria. And what we want to make abundantly clear is that we are warning everybody who is a stakeholder in the zoo about our determination and our resolve to ensure that our land is defended. This is a resolution we have reached and it is cast in stone. You have heard from our Supreme Leader Mazen Nandi Khan. I have nothing more to say. I have done the little I can do, but I encourage you as a Biafra, continue to stand firm, continue to demand for the unconditional release of Mazen Nandi Khan, continue to engage in the civil disobedience, economic sanction to the Janjaweed, continue to ask for your freedom, we will continue to fight until the last man standing. We will never give up. Remember, Mazen Nandi Khan have said it, that it is our resolve to defend our line. Our decision and result to defend our land is a decision that every Biafran have taken and it is cast in stone. Don't give up. Victory is sure. Biafra is coming. No man born of a woman can stop it. May Chukwoku be my guide and protect everyone that have watched this video and shared this video on their platform. May Chukwoku be my guide and protect every Biafra. May Chukwoku be my guide and protect every Odudua person. May Chukwoku be my guide and protect every single person that is genuinely fighting for Biafra wherever you are. May Chukwoku be my guide and protect everyone that have supported this channel, sharing the video on their platform. May Chukwoku be my guide and protect Sunday Bobo, secure him and strengthen him, give him more strength to continue to fight the battle as he has been released. May Chukwoku be my guide and protect our Supreme Leader Mazen Nande Kano. May Chukwoku be my send doctor spiritually to go and be with him, heal him of all infections, guide him, protect him, secure him, give him more strength, and very soon he's going to join us. No weapon formed of fashion against Mazin Nandi Kano shall prosper. Thank you so much for watching wherever you are watching from. And remember, us. see you tomorrow. Bye.